Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming extreme pattern we're going to be in. There's going to be plenty of storms, plenty of severe weather, and a huge temperature swing as well coming up. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this April is overall going to be a colder month or warmer month for the eastern United States based on what's already happened and based on what's expected to happen? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into things and first things first, we're taking a look at those storm reports from yesterday because we did have an enhanced risk of severe weather. And this was actually a lot more scattered about than expected. You can see not a lot of those reports came from just inside the enhanced risk. It kind of came from all around. And we see some of that from Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi. It's all over the place. We had 37 wind reports, three tornadoes, and then six hail reports. So it was mostly a wind-driven event as expected there. Uh, very, very interesting day we had. I hope everybody is safe and sound after that severe weather we had yesterday. Now we're taking a look at the temperature anomalies because we're going to break down the temperature pattern first and we're going to take a look at that temperature swing that's going to occur. Later on in the video we are going to take a look at that severe weather so stay tuned for that. We're taking a look at around now and as you can see we have a warmer pattern overall for the pretty much most of the United States. We do have a negative PNA trying to set up there with the colder temperatures along the west coast. Uh, and that's mostly encouraging those warmer than normal temperatures that are ex being experienced basically eastward from that point. We do have a colder area of air there for the plains, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota. Uh, but that's kind of an anomaly there. It's a very, very small region. Uh, now let's take a look at the actual temperatures by the time we're reaching the high temperatures today, Thursday, April 8th. And as you can see, for the eastern United States, we're going to be dealing with 70s widespread throughout most of the northeast, most of the mid-Atlantic Obviously, the southeast, even 80s down there, uh, the Gulf states, everywhere basically except for those plains regions as you reach further and further west. So it's going to be a very, very warm day for many folks. Now, as we move towards tomorrow, you can see we still are dealing with those far above normal temperatures for the eastern United States. It's going to be quite pleasant here in the eastern half of the country. Out west, though, we do have those colder than normal conditions for the Rockies, the western plains, and then even the Pacific Northwest as well. By the time we're reaching about the high temperatures of Saturday, April 10th, you can see that things get a little bit more sloppy here. We see colder than normal conditions for some of the southeast, some of the southern plains, and then some of the uh, northwestern United States. And then we see some warm in between, kind of, mostly for the northeastern, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes regions of the United States. Let's just move on towards the high temperatures of Monday, and that's going to be on April 12th. So we've jumped here a little bit, but you can see that this pattern becomes a lot more definitive. We see a very strong uh, cool down there that enters into the Rockies and portions of the plains. We're still warm in the east and in the Gulf states, but that cool down is racing in by this point. And I think it's mostly going to stick over these regions. But we can see that the west coast is actually warmed up a little bit there. That's kind of an end to that positive, or sorry, that negative PNA. There, so we're seeing a big switch in the pattern here uh, with some of those oscillations really switching up here by this point. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move towards uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday. We're just going to move forward with this pattern as this cooldown is going to become more and more potent, actually. All right, so here we are taking a look here at about Tuesday at about 2 p.m. here. That's going to be April 13th. And as you can see, that cooldown has become a little bit more potent. We see those blues within the greens, and that's indicating some temperatures that are about 15 to 30 degrees below normal. So that is very, very potent cold air. The southeast is still warmer than normal. That cooldown is kind of getting to the Gulf states here by this point. Again, we still have that positive PNA trying to take place, which encourages colder air to the east of the west coast. So that, it, that is kind of what's, what we're seeing occurring here, obviously. By the time we're reaching Wednesday, April 14th, the high temperatures, take a look at that. This becomes a lot more potent. We're seeing temperatures that are around 30 degrees plus below normal, especially there in the mountaintops of Wyoming. As you can see, there is some magenta color showing up there if you look very, very closely. We can see the East Coast is still warmer than normal, but that cooldown is generally taking over the pattern for most of, I would say, like most of the country outside of the West Coast. And here by Thursday, definitely, here's the high temperature. Take a look at that. Uh, certainly pretty much everywhere is cool by this point. Even the East Coast has now cooled down. By the time we're taking a look at about 2 p.m. on Friday, you can see it is the same story. Uh, we see an even more potent cool down there for eastern Colorado, western Kansas, taking a look at about 30 to maybe even 40 degrees below 
normal temperatures widespread throughout eastern Colorado, western Kansas there, and the panhandle of Oklahoma. Now, by the time we reach about 2 p.m. on Saturday, you can see this cool down is just generally moving further and further south, but this has been a very long-lived, I mean, borderline Arctic blast here at this point. This is, this is Arctic air that has made its way down. I'm sure it's going to be very, very cold. Uh, and, and we're taking a look now at Texas, Oklahoma being heavily impacted by this one as well. And now even the southeast taking a look at some of those colder than normal conditions. Now you can see the east coast there in the northern regions of the east coast has warmed up quite a bit by this point. Let's just take a look at this in five-day increments real quick because I really want to break this down. First off, our five-day increment, the first one is going to be the April 8th, Thursday, today, all the way towards Tuesday, April 13th. And as you can see, we're going to be generally looking at warmer than normal conditions for the eastern half of the country and then even the, basically the southern half of the country as well. So the, only that northwestern corner of the United States is seeing below normal temperatures. But as we move towards that second five-day period, Tuesday, April 13th through Sunday, April 18th, you can see that we see kind of a horseshoe of warmer than normal conditions there for the west coast and the east coast with colder than normal conditions for the central United States. So it is transition. We saw that on the European model now in the five-day increment. We're seeing it again. And then by the time we take a look at the 18th through the 23rd here, uh, you can see that colder than normal conditions really set in here on this model. This is our European Ensemble model. And we see a very strong positive PNA uh, that's going to encourage the colder than normal conditions out eastward. Now what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to take a look at how this will impact the severe weather season as we move along. Uh, would this lead to more severe weather or less severe weather? We're going to find out in just a moment. All right, so here we are taking a look at, we're going to take a look at individual dates, but this is the probability of Cape above 1,000. Uh, so on this frame, we have about a 90 to 100% chance that on Saturday, or sorry, this is about Friday at about 8 p.m., there will be 1,000 plus Cape. So for this frame, it's almost certain there will be 1,000 plus CAPE. Let's move towards the 15th, and you can see there's a lot less probability. The reason I'm using 1,000 CAPE or above is because that's usually the threshold for a severe weather event. Uh, and as you can see, there will be some events still around the 15th of April here. And this is when we're kind of in that transition. There is some colder air for the central United States, but there's still some warmer air around. Uh, and we do see a, a higher probability, about 50 to 70 on this frame. Uh, as you get to the longer range, those probabilities decrease, but by the 17th, the, the probability is in between 10 and 20%, which is extremely low for an ensemble model. You can even see down there in the Gulf, you can see that there is some higher amounts down there. So that is, you know, we could easily be in the 60 to one, you know, 90% chance here, uh, but this model is saying, no, that is not going to be the case. And this lasts all the way through the 23rd, as you can see. Because by this frame, we have in between a 0 and 10% from mostly everywhere in the United States. So yeah, this is going to be, if this cooldown occurs the way this model thinks, this is the same exact model that was calling for that very cold pattern uh, in that last 5-day increment, it would limit that severe weather threat significantly. We would see a significantly limited uh, severe weather period there uh, for a good you know 6-day chunk or possibly more. So speaking of severe weather, here's the day one categorical outlook. This is for Thursday, today, from the time I'm making this video. You can see we do have a band of marginal risk there that extends basically from the Gulf states all the way up to the Ohio Valley and even into a bit of Michigan with a pretty large general thunderstorm risk. So thunderstorms will be around, but no significant severe weather by any means. Now, by the time we reach day two, that's going to be for Friday. We've been talking about this date for about a week now or more. Uh, and as you can see, we have a, a general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green, a marginal risk there in the darker green. In the yellow risk, we have a slight risk. And then for that orange area there for Dallas, Fort Worth, take that all the way through northern Louisiana and then through uh, Mississippi and Alabama, we have a large enhanced risk here at this point. Is there going to be a, a moderate risk? I think it is certainly possible. We're going to be watching for that very, very closely. Uh, there's about a 50% chance I'll be live at some point tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that as well. I don't know at this point, but it is certainly possible that I'll have to pull the trigger and go ahead and go live. Now, for the wind outlook, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, uh, a 15% chance there within the yellow, a 30% chance there within the red, and then that hatch region, that significant hatch region there for Louisiana and Mississippi. That is where we're taking a look at the chance for significant damaging wind to be possible there. So a wind-driven event there on the eastern end of that enhanced risk. 
Now on the western end, you can see that we have a larger hail risk because we have a 5% in the green, 15% chance in the yellow, and then a 30% chance there in the red. And then we have that significant hatched area again here for hail, but it's in a completely different location where they're expecting large hail, two inch diameter plus hail to be possible there over generally the Dallas-Fort Worth region uh, and then areas north and south of that region as well. Now for tornadoes, it's mostly where the wind is, but it's pretty much everywhere, 2% there in the green. 2% chance of tw uh, within 25 miles of a given location of a tornado occurring. Within the brown, we have a 5% chance. And then within the yellow region, we have a 10% chance that is not hatched at this point, which is good news. We'll be watching to see if that does get hatched. Hopefully not, though. So that biggest threat is going to be in between Louisiana and Mississippi. But generally, even if you're in the 2% chance, you're going to want to pay attention because that is a chance of a tornado occurring. So we're going to be watching all of these regions throughout the day tomorrow. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6 here. We've talked about some shorter range things. We have talked about some longer range things as well, but I feel quite confident in everything we've talked about today. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think the risk will be on Friday? And James Mar said, I believe we will upgrade to a moderate risk. Very, very bold there. We will have to see if that does occur or not. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Eden Mattis, alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jake, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Also, for our channel members highlight of the day, I would like to thank our Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms 1, and then also our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to join this, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button and become a channel member today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.